Okay guys, we've talked about igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks. Now let's look at our third and last type of rock, metamorphic rocks. So just like before, we are going to look at the properties, we're going to look at the formation, and we're going to look at the environments that metamorphic rocks form in. So first off, metamorphic rocks uh, get their name from the term metamorphosis, which we see right here. Metamorphosis means kind of to change or to develop. If we think about a, a caterpillar, it will go through metamorphosis and become a butterfly. In the case of metamorphic rocks, that's exactly what happens. That is, uh, an igneous rock, a sedimentary rock, or another metamorphic rock will go through a change and turn into a different type of rock. Metamorphic rocks form in two major ways, through heat and through pressure. If it's heated rock, we call that contact metamorphosis. If it's a uh, rock that forms due to pressure, we call that regional metamorphosis. Now, the main property of metamorphic rocks is that they exhibit foliation. Foliation can mean three basic things. First, it can mean that the rocks become shiny. They're shiny. If we take a look at this rock right here, you see these little white spots in here. Those little white spots are not white minerals. It's actually this darker gray mineral, but it happens to be shiny, so it's catching the light and reflecting it into the camera. The next thing foliation can mean is flat layers. If we take a look at this rock right here, this is made up of lots and lots and lots of little teeny tiny really flat layers. Now that's different than what we saw in sedimentary rocks because in sedimentary rocks those layers can be all kinds of different thickness depending on how much sediment was deposited. But these have been layers that have been compressed usually due to pressure and the layers are super thin. The last thing foliation can mean is that it forms mineral stripes. If we look at this rock right here, we can see those mineral stripes in there. In other words, when this thing is, is uh, going through the tremendous heat and pressure that creates uh, metamorphic rocks, the minerals in there start to migrate or they get pressed into different regions. So rather than being just kind of spread everywhere like we saw in igneous rocks, they, they get kind of pushed into these little pockets and these little stripes that you see through here. All right, now let's talk about the environment that metamorphic rocks form in, or what we can know based on the type of metamorphic rocks, what kind of environment they came from. First thing we see with metamorphic rocks, or one of the things we see, I should say, is um, anywhere we're going to have magma chambers. So right here we see some layers of rock, and each one of these layers could be a different type of rock. And what happens is magma from underneath the Earth's crust kind of pushes up into the Earth's crust, but doesn't like explode out like a volcano. As that magma sits there, it heats those rock layers around here in this little orange band you see, and it metamorphosizes those particular rocks and turns them into metamorphic rocks. The other thing we see is where plates push together, uh, and this is where we get lots and lots of pressure. So at fault lines, like this dark black line right here, we have two plates kind of either pushing together or sliding past one another, or they can be pulling apart, but in this case we need them to be pushing together. And when they push together, they create, create tremendous strain and pressure right along that fault line. And those rocks in that area can also get changed by metamorphosis and turn into metamorphic rock.